The two dedicated Georgia elections workers targeted in Donald Trump's attempt to overthrow the 2020 election, Ruby Freeman and her daughter Shea Moss, told the January 6th committee about the ways their lives were upended based on lies for simply doing their civic duty. This turned my life upside down. Um, I no longer give out my business card. I don't transfer calls. I um, don't want anyone knowing my name. I don't want to go anywhere with my mom because she might yell my name out over the grocery aisle or something. I've lost my name and I've lost my reputation. I've lost my sense of security. All because a group of people starting with number 45 and his ally, Rudy Giuliani, decided to scapegoat me. Well, now the aforementioned Rudy Giuliani is about to pay up for his lies. After a federal judge ruled Giuliani defamed Freeman and Moss and is liable for damages, a civil trial will be held to determine the amount. I'm joined now by Vaughn DuBose, the attorney currently representing Ru Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. I'm Mr. DuBose, thank you so much for being here. Um, I just want to find out how uh, Ms. Freeman and Ms. Moss are feeling in the wake of this ruling in their favor. They feel good about it. Uh, they feel like this has been vindication, not full vindication, I would say, certainly sure. partial vindication. Uh, there's still more work to be done. Um, the trial phase, as you mentioned, is coming up next. And unfortunately, you can't win your sense of security at trial. So it won't be a full vindication in that sense uh, and restoring them to where they should be. But this was a good development, and they are very happy about what the judge did yesterday. And I can tell you that, uh, at least over here, we consider them to be national heroes because anybody who helps folks vote, uh, I would consider that to be, other than librarians, those are my favorite people. Um, let's, let's remind everyone what was said about uh, these two wonderful women uh, by Rudy Giuliani in which uh, he defamed them. Sure. Tape earlier in the day of Ruby Freeman and Shay Freeman Moss and one other gentleman quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they are vials of heroin or cocaine. What was your mom actually handing you on that video? A ginger mint. We know that uh, Rudy Giuliani has claimed that he was simply vigorously advocating for his client, Donald Trump, uh, and that he has tried to defend his statements. But has he ever personally apologized uh, to Ms. Freeman and Ms. Moss for lying about them? Absolutely not. He has, in fact, doubled down on every opportunity, and we still deal with statements from him, even after the lawsuit, uh, even after he's been found liable. So uh, he has not apologized at all. Uh, let, let's talk about what the judge said. Judge Beryl Howell, um, who did rule in your favor, she said this. She said the bottom line is that Giuliani has refused to comply with his discovery obligations and thwarted plaintiffs Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss's procedural rights to obtain any meaningful discovery in the case. Just taking shortcuts to win an election carry, as, as winning taking shortcuts to win an election carries risks, even potential criminal liability, bypassing the discovery process carries serious sanctions, no matter what reservations a non-compliant party may artif try artificially to preserve for appeal. So essentially, is that saying that he just wouldn't comply with discovery at all? That's right. That's exactly what that's saying. You mentioned in your last segment, license, right? That a lot of people feel they have license to do whatever they want. That was obviously the case with Mr. Giuliani as he was before this court. He felt like the discovery rules did not apply to him. And Judge Howell said in a very definite and certain way yesterday, yesterday that they absolutely do. He's also trying to cry poverty. Um, the, the judge said the following, that, uh, that, that Giuliani could not reimburse the attorney's fees. The, the judge, his claims that he cannot reimburse the attorney's fees that he owes your clients were dubious, given that Giuliani was able to pay more than $320,000 to the vendor holding his electronic data, which former President Donald Trump's super PAC reportedly paid, had recently listed, and he recently listed his New York City apartment for $6.5 million and reportedly flew on a private plane to Georgia to surrender to authorities after being indicted there. Um, Giuliani is, I guess, attempting to wriggle out of what he owes your clients by saying he doesn't have any money. Uh, what do you say to those claims, given that he's, you know, selling $6.5 million apartments? Right. The well obviously is not dry. Um, there, there are resources at his fingertips. He flew down to Atlanta on a private plane just last week. 
So we know there are resources. After reducing uh, the, 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 the judgment uh, to an actual number in the trial, the next phase will be identifying assets and trying to satisfy that judgment. Uh, I, I, uh, it still hurts my heart when I hear Ruby Freeman saying she lost her reputation and her daughter saying she's afraid to call out, uh, have her name called out or give out her business card. I wonder if that feeling has changed uh, since they have gotten so much support around the country. And I hope they know and feel how much people care about them and, and love what the fact that they stood up for democracy and refused to be intimidated. Uh, is, is there any sense for them that they've feel vindicated and that they don't feel that same sense of pain or is it still that that bad for them right now there is some sense of vindication in, in judge howell's ruling yesterday but at the same time they still deal with a lot of the fallout from what's happened uh you know it's particularly difficult to see uh rudy giuliani try to position himself as the victim yeah. uh that he's being victimized in this entire process uh, I, I've heard people say often that they, they can't believe how far he's fallen and the level that he's fallen to. Well, he didn't fall. He stooped to this level. And it's not sad to see at all. What's sad is what's happened to Ruby and Shay as a result of his intentional lies. And some folks from New York might say he didn't fall at all. He just revealed who he always was. Uh, Von DuBose. Thank you so much. Please pass along our regards uh, to the ladies. But we begin tonight with fact versus fiction, reality versus a reality show. When it comes to Donald Trump, you know which side he tends to come down on. Trump seems convinced that he can make people believe the world is actually flat. His embrace of lies, conspiracy theories, and alternative facts underscores most of his legal woes. In court filings today in the Georgia election interference case, Trump pleaded not guilty and opted to waive his right to an arraignment next week. He also requested to sever his case from any of his 18 co-defendants who are demanding speedy trials. Also today, the judge in the Georgia case, Scott McAfee, announced cameras would be allowed in the courtroom for all hearings and proceedings. They will also be live streamed on YouTube. So that's fun. As to Trump's avoidance of his arraignment, perhaps he's too busy preparing more of those bizarre and random social media video posts that he's been posting that show that he continues to live in the upside down. In one, he thanks the heavily Democratic city of Atlanta and three majority black neighborhoods for supposedly showering him with support. Of course, there's no evidence uh, that there was even a sprinkle of support from the same city he repeatedly called horrible and crime infested. In one of the neighborhoods he called out, voted for Joe Biden with roughly 90 percent of the vote, according to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Speaking of the reality show version of the world Trump lives in, it's actually a different legal case that threatens to put an end to one of his longest running fictions, that he's actually a real billionaire. It gets far less attention, but the civil case from New York Attorney General Letitia James' office is fascinating with claims that Trump and his company defrauded banks and business associates by inflating his net worth and the value of his assets by billions of dollars on financial statements. That trial is scheduled for October 2nd. Now, remember, it was Trump's supposed business success, as portrayed in his reality show, The Apprentice, that propelled him into the White House. We now have the transcript for the deposition Trump gave in the New York case. And here's the thing. Far from being a very stable genius, Trump is really not that good at depositions. When he's forced to answer questions under oath, it usually doesn't go well. During his deposition in the E. Jean Carroll case, for instance, he not only doubled down on his famous Access Hollywood comments, but even after making the abhorrent defense that he couldn't have had, he couldn't have sexually assaulted Carroll because she was not his type, he confused an image of her with his former wife, Marla Maples. True with stars that, that they can grab women by the Well, that's what, that's, if you look over the last million years, I guess that's been largely true. Not always, but largely true. Unfortunately or fortunately. And you consider yourself uh, to be a star? I think you can say that, yeah. It's Marla. You're saying Marla's in this photo? That's Marla, yeah. That's, that's my wife. Which woman are you pointing to? No. Here. Carol. 
Oh, that, the person oh, okay. you just pointed to was oh, Eugene Carroll. Who is that? Who is this? Point, right. And the person, the woman on the right, is your then wife. I don't Ivana? know. This was the picture. Ivana. I assume that's John Johnson. Is that? That's Carol. Because it's very blurry. I mean, it's very blurry. The picture. <laughs> So when, <laughs> when Trump agreed to sit down, what turned out to be a seven-hour deposition this April with the New York Attorney General's office, you can guess how well that went for him. Trump claimed that he could not have been involved in committing business fraud when he was in the White House because he was too busy saving the world from nuclear <laughs> holocaust. Quote, I was very busy. I was, uh, I was considered the most important job. It was considered the most important job in the world, saving millions of lives. I think you would have nuclear holocaust if I didn't deal with North Korea. I think you would have a nuclear war if I weren't elected. And I think you might have a nuclear war now if you want to know the truth. <laughs> and when it came to his annual financial statements, in which James says he overvalued his properties by up to $2.2 billion each year, it looks like Trump copied the defense that his recent pal and fired Fox host, Tucker Carlson's lawyers used in a slander suit against Tuckums. That trial, uh, that Trump never felt that the documents would even be taken seriously. Trump, I never felt that these statements would be taken very seriously because you open it up and right at the beginning of the statement, you read a page and half of stuff saying, go get your own accounting, go get your own this, go get your own that. A lawyer for the New York Attorney General's office asked so why did you get these statements prepared? Trump responded, I would say more for maybe myself, just to see the list of properties. I think more for myself than anything else. And if that wasn't enough to get him off the hook, Trump said, don't trust him, just listen to his friends. Quote, friends of mine have said, you're the most honest person in the world. So we've done a good job. Don't get credit for it. That's okay. <laughs> I'm joined now. I'm joined now by Choice Vance. MSNBC legal analyst, former U.S. attorney and professor at the University of Alabama School of Law, and Tim O'Brien, MSNBC political analyst and the executive editor of Bloomberg Opinion, who I think was very much enjoying uh, <laughs> the Trump deposition. Uh, Tim, you, you've deposed Trump before. I, why does he keep doing it? it how did it go when, he, when you did it? Well, first off, when, when Donald Trump says I'm the most honest person <laughs> in the world, know that he's lying. Um, and the other interesting thing I was just thinking about as you, you know, as you ran that is when, when Trump sued me for my book, at the core of it, there was a lot of issues he was uncomfortable with. But part of it was he claimed that he was defamed because the book, the book intentionally lowballed his wealth, okay. which I didn't do. We, we never got to court. The, the case was dismissed. Yeah. Um, but during the course of that, he insisted he had given me one of these documents, one of these statements of financial condition right. that are at the core of, of Tish James's prosecution, New York State Attorney General. And during the course of that deposition, he lied that I had received one of them. I never had. <laughs> but he also talked during that deposition about how these were definitive outlines of how much it was worth that I should have taken them seriously. And then during my deposition, they passed one of those across the table to me. And his lawyer said, would you take this seriously? And I said, well, actually, I wouldn't. And they said, why? And I said, because in the opening pages of this document, it says it hasn't been audited by his accountants and it doesn't conform with standard accounting principles. So it's very interesting to see him now say you shouldn't take this seriously right. because it doesn't conform to standard accounting principles. And my accountants didn't sign off on it. And I don't really take them seriously. I just treated it like a list of properties, which is completely untrue. He used these things to convince the media yes. that he was wealthier than he was. And, and the reason that's so important to him, the reason you see him on these tapes talking about, I'm much richer than other people, I'm much smarter than other people, I'm president and you're not, is because he's deeply insecure. He's insecure about his intellect. He's insecure about his success. He's insecure about his wealth. He's insecure about his physicality. Yeah. You name it, he's insecure about it, which is why he always boasts about it. Yeah. I think what's interesting now in the current, you know, prosecution that he's facing on this issue. It's the first time he's been held to account mm -hmm. rigorously, I think, other than our lawsuit in, you know, in a legal setting in which he gets himself in trouble when he lies under oath or he's presented with documents that contradict the truth. Yeah. I mean, and Joyce, it is not illegal to plus up your wealth to try to make yourself look good. Right. It, it is. I, I can imagine it's not illegal to lie about being richer than you are to get you know, marks to vote for you and make you president because they think The Apprentice is real and not like fake like cribs. But he did that. But he's in trouble anyway, right? So 
he did things like in this deposition say that he's, his properties are like the Mona Lisa's of properties. So he's still lying even in the deposition. He says um, his brand is worth billions. Quote, Donald Trump, the biggest thing is not included. It's my brand. My lawyers never bring it up. But the brand is the biggest. And because you can you can double, triple my statement. But my brand is if I wanted to create a good statement, I would put I start with sentence one. My brand is worth billions and billions of dollars. Why is it? Why is he in trouble, at least in a civil case, for lying about his brand when it is not legal technically to just lie and say you're richer than you are? Right. So that's exactly the right question to ask to help us understand this lawsuit. It's brought by New York's attorney general. As you point out, Joy, it's a civil case. And it alleges that Trump fraudulently used fraudulent practices, what Tim is referring to on, on these uh, accounting statements, in order to obtain benefits when he was trying to get, for instance, insurance or trying to value properties in order to get loans. So she is, in essence, alleging that he engaged in improper business practices and should be penalized in terms of his ability to do ongoing business in the state of New York. That's the ultimate liability that he faces here. And so, Tim, I mean, there's I mean, there is talk of what she could do, right? The sanctions, right? She could stop him from doing business in the state of New York, which is still the core of where his businesses are. Um, but if it also comes out in the course of this trial that he's lying about all of it, I would wonder if people would want to invest in his future golf course businesses. I mean, he mainly sells his name. He doesn't own as many buildings as people think he owns. He actually mostly licensing, quote unquote, his brand. Um, you know, the, just on this whole issue of him insisting that his brand has incredible value, <laughs> No accountant includes brands right. in the value of some in, when they assess someone's net worth. It's a subjective number. It's not included. There's no actual demonstrable evidence other than condo sales many years ago that the Trump name actually enhanced the value of anything he touched. Right. And there's a lot of evidence recently with people taking his name off of buildings that has actually now Correct. become a ball and chain. So putting that issue aside, um, New York is the core of his wealth. Most of his wealth is tied up in a small handful of buildings. The golf courses and even the licensing stuff doesn't really account for most of his wealth. And he built that wealth on his father's, his father's money in New York. And the, I think the real threat in the Tish James case is she can prevent him ultimately from doing business in the, in the, in the state and city of New York.